Some would say that the rose is the perfect bloom and when placed within crystal has a beauty unblemished. It is a combination that personified the theme of college football's second season of the 21st century. The Miami Hurricanes began the 2001 season where they left off in 2000, ranked number two in the country and hungry for the program's fifth national championship. But to climb atop the college football world, the Canes would need to win in Tallahassee, Florida and Blacksburg, Virginia, tasks they had failed to accomplish for years. They would need to avenge their lone bitter defeat of 2000. And they would need to go on the road in front of the largest hostile crowd a Miami team had ever faced and defeat the winningest coach in college football history while being led by a man in his first game at the helm of a major college program. But that man and this team were poised to create a perfect storm of unsurpassed force in 2001. A confluence of velocity and fortitude matched with supreme swiftness that would leave an indelible mark on the face of this sport. Indeed, the goals for these hurricanes included crystal and rose petals in 2001. But throughout the year, the focus of this team wasn't on their run for the Roses or national championship trophies because this team learned one lesson a year earlier. That although things like rankings and bowl bids had become a complicated process in college football, the strategy needed to achieve their dreams was, in reality, a straightforward one. This team would have to aspire to the unblemished nature of Crystal and the purity of the Rose. Their hard work would be validated, their goals realized, simply by crafting a season of perfection. The Larry Coker era began against a college football coaching legend as a daunting schedule saw Miami open the season against Penn State. The record crowd of 109,313 in newly expanded Beaver Stadium created an emotionally charged entrance for the Nittany Lions, who were led onto the field by once paralyzed teammate Adam Talaferro. But the Hurricanes were determined to demonstrate their superiority on this night. Clinton Portis's debut as Miami's featured runner was a spectacular one, as he gained most of his 164 yards rushing in the first half. After the first of what would be four Todd Seavers field goals on the evening, middle linebacker John Vilma provided the defense's first big play of 2001. James Lewis recovered Omar Easy's fumble, turning the ball over to the high-octane Hurricane offense. Five plays later, Ken Dorsey connected on a 27-yard touchdown pass to Ethnic Sands. Later in the second quarter, Dorsey would find pay dirt again, this time connecting with senior fullback Najee Davenport for 28 yards. Just before halftime, Portis brought the Canes into the red zone with a 31-yard gain on a draw play. Then, Dorsey found tight end Jeremy Shockey for his third touchdown pass of the first half. Meanwhile, the Hurricane defense was overwhelming, twice knocking Penn State quarterback Matt Seneca out of the game in the first half. Miami led 30-0 before the Nittany Lions would even so much as complete a pass. It was the largest halftime deficit in the Joe Paterno era. Dorsey threw for a career-best 344 yards as the Hurricanes amassed 602 yards of total offense. And defensive ends, Jerome McDougall and Andrew Williams, pressed into starting duty, were impressive in their first Division I football appearances. The 33-7 dismantling of Penn State propelled the Canes to the top spot in one of the national polls. The Hurricanes opened their home and Big East schedules with a 61-0 route of Rutgers. It was Miami's largest margin of victory in nearly half a century. The Canes scored in all three phases of the game, 
Ken Dorsey's 315 passing yards led an offensive attack that amassed 542 total yards. Special teams added to the margin with Philip Buchanan's dazzling 56-yard punt return. And the defense contributed to the scoring as Marquise Fitzgerald's forced fumble was returned for a touchdown by defensive end John Square. After dominating the first eight quarters of the 2001 season by a combined score of 94 to seven, the Hurricanes were a finely tuned machine firing on all cylinders heading into the next game on their schedule, a highly anticipated rematch with the Washington Huskies. However, due to the tragic events of September 11, it would be 19 days before the Hurricanes would take the field again, as the nation and this football team began a healing process. Dominate on three! One, two, three! In a nationally televised Thursday night encounter against Big East foe Pittsburgh, it was evident the Canes had lost some of the momentum displayed in their two season opening blowouts. But even though they were admittedly rusty, Miami once again demonstrated their clear superiority over an outmatched opponent. Clinton Portis had three touchdowns to go with his 156 yards from scrimmage. And this picture-perfect touchdown pass from Ken Dorsey to Andre Johnson near the end of the first quarter extended Dorsey's streak of at least one touchdown pass to 19 games, the longest by a UM quarterback. Todd Sievers kicked three field goals for the second consecutive game in the 43-21 victory as the Canes looked ahead toward a pair of non-conference games next up on the schedule. Miami returned to the Orange Bowl to post a workmanlike 38-7 victory over Troy State, but their attention quickly turned to their intense in-state rivalry with the Florida State Seminoles. I liked your energy in the second half. We didn't have that energy to start the game, did we? We did not have that energy to start the game, guys. It's all behind us now, right? All behind us now. We've got to have a great week, have a great week, and get ourselves ready to earn an opportunity to win in Tallahassee. It ain't gonna be a free lunch. We gotta get better. We gotta earn. We gotta earn a win in Tallahassee. We're not gonna take this team lightly and we're not gonna build them up too much. We're gonna look at them. We focus on us. Our philosophy is we focus on us and what we can do. And we feel that we can execute what we're gonna do when we concentrate on the little things, we'll be victorious. This is one of the reasons you come to Miami to play big time games, especially with a rival like Florida State and uh, and going in there knowing that they have the uh, you know the unbeaten streak going and, and we're gonna be able to beat them at home and and all these factors of us, you know, last time we were up there, we lost 47 to zero, then 31 to 21. I think uh, everybody's gonna be motivated. I mean, the fifth year seniors that have been in the squad five years understand the 47 to zero and the 31 to 21 loss that we had up there the past couple times we've been up there. It's Florida State. I mean, if you come to Miami, you're ever since you're born, you're you're born to hate the Florida State Seminoles, and, and that's the way they are. They hate the University of Miami, but it's all good, and uh, you know, it's definitely gonna be a great game next Saturday. The Hurricanes were the last team to defeat FSU in Tallahassee a decade earlier. The Seminoles' 54-game unbeaten stretch at Doe Campbell Stadium included 37 consecutive home victories, both streaks the longest in the nation. But this Miami team was resolute in their mission to, in their own words, break history and make history. Miami quickly quieted the crowd of 82,836, second largest in Doak Campbell Stadium history, when midway through the first quarter, Ed Reed's block punt was scooped up by Marquise Fitzgerald for the game's first points. Four plays later, William Joseph's sack of Chris Ricks caused the Seminole signal caller to cough up the football, which was recovered by Chris Campbell. With special teams and defense recording big plays, it was now the offense's turn. 
and they came through on the very next snap of the football. Miami at the FSU 27 left hash. Dorsey fakes the handoff, throws, middle of the end zone, caught Andre Johnson, rock and roll, touchdown Hurricanes. In the second quarter, defensive leader Ed Reed recorded his third interception of the year, setting up the Canes at the Seminole 36-yard line. Once again, Ken Dorsey went right to work, hitting Andre Johnson on the next play, this time down to the one-yard line. After three straight runs into the middle of the line failed to find the end zone, Larry Coker and his staff knew they had set the Knolls up perfectly. Leading 14 to nothing, the Hurricanes went right for the kill. Fourth and goal inside the one. Dorsey takes the snap, takes the hand up, throws right side, caught, Chucky, touchdown, Hurricanes! A one-yard touchdown pass from Dorsey to Jeremy Shockey. Well, I have to admit, if I was Larry Coker, I would have kicked the field goal. But Larry Coker goes for the jugular. The Seminoles closed the gap to 21-13 to at halftime, but then UM dominated the third quarter. After Dorsey's third touchdown pass of the afternoon and second to Andre Johnson, the Canes found diversity in their scoring methods. Ricks in the gun. Gets the pigskin, has time. Now here comes pressure. Joseph with a hit. Fumbled football. Verma picks it up. He's on the run. Across the 30, the 25, the 20, the 15, 10, 5. Dives into the end zone. Razzle, dazzle, touchdown, Hurricanes. A 23-yarder from the right hash mark. Sloppy snap is down, and Capshaw has the football running around the right side, takes it over the five, into the end zone! Touchdown, Abracadabra! Freddy Capshaw runs it in around the right side. How about that? I don't believe what I just saw. The defense's six takeaways included two interceptions each by Philip Buchanan and Ed Reed. After Willis McGahee closed out the scoring with a bruising eight-yard touchdown run, Miami had made its point. The 49-27 demolition of the Seminoles featured the most points the Hurricanes had ever scored against FSU and the second most points ever given up at home by the Knolls. UN had its most impressive win of the season against the best team it had played so far. The statement and history was made. The Hurricanes win. They beat Florida State 49 to 27 and storm the field in Tallahassee. The 54 game unbeaten streak for Florida State is over. Miami wins here for the first time in 10 years and the Canes are 5 and 0 and looking good as the number one team in the country. Fellas, you did something nobody's done in 10 years today. Nobody's done this in 10 years. You came up here and you got it done today, guys. You got it done today, Doc. We got a lot of improvement, we know that. That's a great job today. That's a great effort, team, team win. Offense, defense, kicking game, that's a great job. That's an awesome, awesome job, guys. Be proud of what you did today, man. Be proud of what you did today. We still didn't put four quarters together, obviously, but if we can go out there and handle Florida State in their stadium by beating by, what, 22 points, something like that, that just sends a message to the rest of the country. We got a lot of a lot of leadership, a, a lot of uh, veteran guys that, that know what know what it takes to win in such a hostile environment, and uh, you know Neil said we're gonna have to do it again, uh, you know down the line. And the, but the biggest thing for us right now is coming out in two weeks and performing well against West Virginia on on a Thursday night game. Twelve days after their triumph in Tallahassee, the Hurricanes resumed conference play in a rare Thursday night affair in the Orange Bowl. Dorsey back to pass, throws right side, caught by Shockey. Reaches in, does he have it? Yes, touchdown, touchdown Hurricanes. Shockey reached the ball over the goal line and the Hurricanes score. Miami was dominant in its 45-3 win over West Virginia. Once again, the Canes defense scored, this time on a 74-yard interception return by James Lewis, in which he was literally escorted into the end zone by the rest of the defensive backfield. Over the 20, he takes it over the 10, into the end zone, touchdown Hurricanes! James Lewis, the strong safety with the INT, he returns it for a score. Later, the Hurricanes unleashed the future of its running game on an unsuspecting Mountaineer defense 
as true freshman Frank Gore literally burst onto the scene with two spectacular second half scores. Frank Gore, left, makes a move, across the 40, 35, 30, left sideline, the 20, 10, 5, into the end zone, rock and roll, touchdown, Frank Gore. Rudolph takes the snap, hands off to Gore, straight ahead across the 45, 40, breaks tackles, 35, 30, still on the move, the 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, he's in the end zone again, Frank Gore. The defense recorded five sacks to go along with five turnovers. And for the second consecutive game, senior Ed Reed had two picks. He led the nation with six at that point in 2001, and Miami was now 6-0 and about to embark on a challenging stretch run toward their goal of an undefeated season. In a game that was significant mainly because junior Heisman Trophy candidate Ken Dorsey set a new Miami record for career touchdown passes, the Canes quickly dispatched of Temple 38 to nothing. Dorsey throws right side, hits weird at the 10, escapes from a tackler, runs into the end zone, rock and roll, touchdown Hurricanes. A 15-yard pass play from Dorsey to Kevin Beard. And Ken Dorsey is now the all-time touchdown pass leader in the history of the University of Miami. Now, UM would face their most difficult stretch of the season, the final four games against their toughest competition of the year. Our next four are going to be, I mean, they, they play, it's, it's, it's playoff week. I mean, we got Boston College, we got Syracuse, then we got Washington, then we got Virginia Tech. We got to, everybody got to come against the team and we got to step it up. The regular season over, now we're going into the playoffs. You know, we got four games ahead of us that's all playoff contenders. And, you know, we're trying to get to the Super Bowl, so we got to win these games. Any game we lose, we eliminate it, so it's time to bear down. The first test took place on the road against the Eagles of Boston College. A team that had yet to lose a home game in 2001, counting Notre Dame among its victims. For the first time in 24 games as a starter, Ken Dorsey would not throw a touchdown pass. But worse than that, his four interceptions on a cold, blustery afternoon in Chestnut Hill had the Canes relying on four Todd Seavers field goals as their only points deep into the game. Miami's offense had to rely on Clinton Portis, who responded with a 160-yard effort on 36 carries. The only performance more inspiring than Portis's effort was that of Miami's defense. Time and time again, the Hurricanes' D was called upon to preserve UM's slim lead, which stood at 12-7 late in the fourth quarter. Then. Following a gallant, desperate conversion on a fourth and ten, Boston College quarterback Brian St. Pierre led the Eagles to a first and goal at the Miami nine-yard line. With less than 40 seconds left in the contest, the Canes defense would be asked once again to preserve their run to the national championship. On first and goal from the nine, St. Pierre drops back, oh. throws left side, tip, and into the hands of Matt Walter, the interception. Brings it across the 15, the 20, and Reed takes the ball out in exchange. Brings it over the 40, 50, down the middle. It's a race, the 30, the 20. Reed is going to score for Miami. The Hurricanes are going to win this game. Oh, my. Oh, my. I don't believe it. That's one of the greatest finishes I've seen in Hurricane history. St. Pierre's pass ricocheted off Mike Rump's knee into the hands of defensive lineman Matt Walters for the interception. It was at that moment Ed Reed took matters into his own hands. Everybody talks about the talent on this team, the talent this, where guys run fast to jump high. I said, yeah, I like that. We do have talent, but what, what we do have also is character. It's character. It's character. You don't win games like you won today just with talent, just with talent. Your character shines through today. We struggle so on offense, no doubt about it. We'll get better. We'll get better. Guys, you're going to have some days like this. you got to win games like this to be champions and win championships. You won it today. Congratulations. 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 Coach had told us before, uh, before we came down here in the last 10 years, I think, 
the margin of victory at our, at our place was 23, and the margin of victory down here, average margin of victory down here was four. And so we knew it was going to be a dogfight. I mean, they always play hard. A game like this here will prepare us for when we have to play a tight game. And you know what I mean? It, it, it was a character check for us. And now we know what type of players we got around us. And people, we know we, no one's on our team going to give up. I think it's a wake-up call, you know, for all aspects of the game. Um, we, we just got to make our corrections, you know, and, and go from there. After the immaculate interception and the Canes 18-7 escape from Boston College, some thought that 13th-ranked Syracuse, undefeated in the Big East and riding an eight-game winning streak, could provide an even bigger challenge for Miami than BC. The Hurricanes, however, had other thoughts. Dorsey fakes the gift, plants, fires, end zone, right side, and it's caught, Andre Johnson! He makes the catch for a Miami touchdown, a 22-yard pass play. What a fabulous catch by Andre Johnson! In a complete reversal from the previous week, Ken Dorsey put Miami back on track for the national championship game, throwing four touchdown passes as the Canes overwhelmed Syracuse 59 to nothing. Dorsey, quick drop, pumps, throws over the middle, caught, Chucky, bring it up, touchdown, Hurricanes. Oh, that was beautiful. Prior to the game, there was much attention paid to the highly anticipated matchup of All-American tackle Bryant McKinney and Syracuse's NCAA sack leader, White Freeney. It was a matchup that was one-sided. Not only did McKinney refuse to give up the first sack of his career, but Freeney was held without so much as a tackle. Dorsey, back to pass, pops, fires, caught inside the 15 by Andre Johnson. Scoots right, down pops left, across the five, he's in, rock and roll, touchdown, Hurricanes. A 31-yard touchdown pass to Andre Johnson. Oh, the Hurricanes just struck gold. Facing little pressure, Dorsey threw two touchdown passes apiece to Andre Johnson and Jeremy Shockey in just three quarters of work. Clinton Portis added a touchdown with his 132 yards rushing, and Frank Gore contributed a career-high 153 yards on the ground. Miami's defense, led by cornerback Philip Buchanan, did the rest. Buchanan recovered a fumble that led to a touchdown recorded a 17-yard sack, and returned an interception 76 yards for a touchdown in the fourth quarter. Finally, these Hurricanes were playing with a flawless fury that indicated they were on top of their game. And now, they could finally turn their attention to an opponent they had been waiting more than 14 months to face. It's been a long time since we've lost a football game. We remember who, who we lost that football game to, rainy day in Seattle. They'll be here this weekend. Let's be here this weekend. Let's be ready. Let's be ready. Let's be ready. Let's be ready. They ruined our season last year and get prepared to another stepping stone. We're going to stomp them for sure. That, that's guaranteed. We're no prisoners on Saturday next weekend. All out. A capacity crowd of 78,114 electrified the Orange Bowl for Miami's rematch with 12th ranked Washington. The postponement of the game from September 15th to November 24th only seemed to heighten the anticipation surrounding this contest. Since their five point loss to the Huskies last season, the Canes had reeled off 19 consecutive victories and had firmly entrenched themselves as the nation's number one team. However, they had one important piece of unfinished business, payback. But no one, least of all the unsuspecting Washington players, could have foreseen the eruption these Hurricanes were prepared to unleash on this night. The outburst was immediate. On the third play from scrimmage, middle linebacker John Vilma created the game's first turnover. It took the Hurricanes just two plays for Clinton Portis to provide the Canes with a 7-0 lead barely one minute into the contest. Then, 
On the first play of the second quarter, the floodgates opened. High formation behind Dorsey. Drops back, gives to Portis. Takes it over right guard. Has room. 25, 20. He's off to the races. 10, 5. He's in. Rock and roll. Touchdown, Hurricanes. A 30-yard run by Portis. His second TD of the game. Portis's 30-yard TD run ignited a 30-point explosion for Miami in the second stanza. After a Chris Campbell interception, Clinton Portis scored his third touchdown, this time on the first of Ken Dorsey's three touchdown passes on the evening. Then, on consecutive plays, the Hurricanes special teams did their part. First, on Kellen Winslow's tackle of Washington's punter in the end zone for a safety. Low snap, has trouble picking it up. He's on the move, and he's brought down to the end zone. A safety, Kellen Winslow. Then, on the ensuing free kick, Philip Buchanan's 60-yard return set the Canes up on the Huskies' 15-yard line. Buchanan lets it bounce, takes it at the 25, brings it over the middle, 30, 35, cuts right, 40, to the right side by the 50, cuts it back, 45, 40, still going in traffic, the 35, still out of the 30, right side by the 25, 40, and down to the 15-yard line, 60 yards, Philip Buchanan in traffic with a monster return for Miami. One play later, Dorsey connected with Najee Davenport in the end zone for a 30 to nothing lead. Still, the onslaught wasn't over. Two plays later, William Joseph's pressure enabled him to deflect Cody Pickett's attempted pass, and Jerome McDougal took full advantage of the opportunity. Pickett trying to set up the screen right side. Tip dead, intercepted by McDougal at the 10. He's on the loose, the five, dives into the end zone. Touchdown, Miami! In the first seven and a half minutes of the second quarter, Miami put 30 points on the scoreboard and took a 37 to nothing halftime lead on their way to a 65 to seven blowout of Washington. The defense recorded seven turnovers and four sacks as the Hurricanes exacted their revenge on the Huskies. The 65 points were the most given up by a Washington team in 80 years. In their last two games, the Canes' 124-7 domination set an NCAA record for victory margin against consecutive nationally ranked opponents. And while the statement made in a rocking Orange Bowl this evening had many of the Hurricanes fans feeling a bit, well, rosy, this UM team knew there remained one more obstacle in the path of their ultimate goal. We got another game to play. We ain't worried about roses. We ain't worried about Rose Bowl. Nothing, guys. It's a one-game season right now. Again, call me on this one again. We're mature enough to understand that we got one more game left before the Rose Bowl. Look what happened to Nebraska. Look what happened to Oklahoma. You start thinking about the roses, and yeah, you're going to get them, but in your grave. With a bid to the national championship game in the Rose Bowl on the line, Miami needed to accomplish something they hadn't done since 1992, beat the Virginia Tech Hokies in Blacksburg. The Canes defense held the Hokies to just 87 yards of offense in the first half. Phil Buchanan had an interception, and Ed Reed broke Benny Blade's UM interception record with his 20th career pick. Meanwhile, the offense was rolling up more than 250 first half yards on its way to a 20 to three halftime advantage. A 14 yard Dorsey to Shockey connection. a seven-yard Clinton Portis run, followed by four Todd Seavers field goals, put the Hurricanes' destiny in their hands, owning a 26-10 lead with less than 10 minutes remaining in the contest. After a furious Virginia Tech rally, aided by a special team score, all of a sudden Miami was desperately holding on to a two-point advantage. But the Hokies were unable to catch the Canes, and after this two-point conversion fell harmlessly to the turf with just over six minutes remaining, Virginia Tech would not mount a serious threat for the remainder of the contest. When the Hokies did get possession with a sliver of hope remaining, 
Once again, the Canes look to their defensive leader to keep their championship dreams intact. Noel in the shotgun. The junior takes the snap, has time, throws over the middle, and Reed gets a pick at the 30-yard line. A diving pick by Ed Reed, his second of the game, and the Canes have the ball back. Oh, the biggest play of the year right there by Ed Reed. The biggest playmaker you have on this football team. Ed Reed's diving interception stifled the Hokies' final realistic chance at victory, and the Hurricanes' goal of a Rose Bowl berth was finally realized. The Hurricanes are going to California. Miami is in the national championship game. The Hurricanes beat Virginia Tech 26-24. The Canes are perfect, and they are going to play in the national championship game, the Rose Bowl. prouder of a team, anybody in my entire life, guys. You, you went through this entire year, the distractions, the pressure, you're number one, you're number four, you're going to get left out, you got left out last year, you just practiced, you played, you got close, you got tight, you got to be a unit. Offense, defense, special teams, you never flinched, guys, you never flinched today, you never flinched, you never flinched. Really, really proud of you guys, we're going to the ship. <laughs> But on behalf of the Tournament of Roses, I am Gary Thomas. I am the Executive Vice President, President-Elect. I'm here to say congratulations to Miami, both on the conference win and retaining your number one standing in the BCS. And gentlemen, welcome to Pasadena. Hey, man, we played our hearts out, man. I take my hats off to Virginia Tech, dog. Man, I love y'all, bro. That's why I came back, man. But we're not finished. Right. We're going to enjoy this. But we ain't finished, baby. Let's go. <laughs> the road to Pasadena was a historic and gratifying one for the Miami Hurricanes. In extending the nation's longest winning streak to 21 games, UM became just the fifth team to play in all five major New Year's Day bowl games. They won on the road in front of a record Penn State crowd. They snapped the nation's longest home winning streak by recording their first win in Tallahassee in a decade. They won a nail biter at Boston College. They avenged last year's only setback by dominating Washington. And they finished the season as the nation's only undefeated Division I team and atop every poll, including the one that mattered, the BCS. The Bowl Championship Series final standings assigned a controversial opponent for Miami in the Rose Bowl, a one-loss Nebraska team featuring the Huskers' first Heisman Trophy winning quarterback, a team that actually spent much of the season atop the BCS rankings. As the Canes prepared to take the field in another historic matchup with the Cornhuskers, the goal of this UM team was not just to win the game, but to dominate and erase all doubt once and for all. This season of perfection had one final act. Be you today, be the best you, let's, let's win it inside the lines, guys. Just like you did at Penn State, just like you did at Florida State, just like you did at Virginia Tech, let's see you fly today, let's see you fly. Let's play hard, tempo, rhythm, get it out of the home, let's fly around, let's play fast, we're fast, we're a fast football team. Play fast, play fast, and have fun with it, guys. Seize the day. Enjoy this moment, guys. We're in the ship. We're in the ship. This is where you wanted to be. We're here. We're here. Enjoy this moment. Seize the day. Guys, let's give it up for each other. It's us. It's us. It's not Nebraska. It's us. Right here. Right here. Give it up for each other. Good luck. Good luck. This would indeed be a historic evening for the granddaddy of them all. Not only would this be the first time since 1946 that teams from outside the Big Ten and Pac-10 had played in the Rose Bowl game, but this tradition-laden college football classic had yet to see a team as fast, as talented, or as focused and determined 
as the 2001 Miami Hurricanes. The Canes jumped on top midway through the first quarter when Ken Dorsey and Andre Johnson hooked up for the first time on the evening. Dorsey right to work, fakes the handoff, throws down the middle, wide open, Johnson at the 12, over the 10, 5, rock and roll, touchdown, Hurricanes! A 49-yard touchdown pass from Dorsey to Andre Johnson, and the Canes strike first. Johnson easily beat the Cornhuskers' attempt to cover him man for man. And this would be a harbinger of things to come for the beleaguered Nebraska secondary. On the first play of the second quarter, the two connected once again, this time for a 34-yard gain. Now, with the Husker defense sufficiently loosened up, it was time for Clinton Portis to strike the next blow on the ground. Dorsey changing the play at the line of scrimmage. He has McGahee and Portis in an eye behind him. Second down and 10 from the Huskers, 39. Portis gets the call, running left, breaks tackles, cuts right, across the 35, 30, 25, 20, right sideline, the 10, the 5, he's in! Kick out the jams! Clinton Portis, touchdown, Hurricanes! Down 14 to nothing and facing a third and seven, Eric Crouch would attempt just his fourth pass of the game, but the hungry Hurricane defense now smelled blood. Third down and seven for Nebraska from the Huskers, 37. Crouch back to pass, throws right side. It's picked up. It's picked up and taken across the 30 into the end zone. James Lewis with the INT return for a touchdown. Miami scores again. With a three touchdown cushion, the Miami D was now playing with reckless abandon. After a quick three and out on Nebraska's next possession, the UM offense went back to work, challenging Nebraska to stop their passing game. I formation, Shockey lines up as the fullback. Dorsey, back to pass, throws, right side of the end zone, caught by Shockey, takes it over the goal line, he's in for a Miami touchdown. Miami does it again, a 21 yard touchdown pass from Dorsey to Shockey. In a span of three minutes and 53 seconds, the Canes transformed a 7-0 lead into a 27-0 advantage. And after Dorsey connected with Johnson for another score, one of the most dominant first halves ever in a championship game was complete. It was a first half that saw Dorsey throw for 258 yards and three touchdowns, with five of his throws going to Andre Johnson for 160 yards and two scores. Clinton Portis averaged more than seven yards on each of his nine carries, and the Husker attack, averaging just 1.7 yards on first down, was limited to just 119 total yards in the half. It's been all Hurricanes, 34-0 over Nebraska. 30 minutes away from a fifth national championship. Nebraska's vaunted option was rendered helpless against Miami's speed, preparation, and discipline on defense. Safety Ed Reed led the Canes in tackles on the evening, and middle linebacker John Vilma dominated the line of scrimmage. Ken Dorsey's 362 passing yards, along with Andre Johnson's 199 receiving yards, each set UM Bowl records and earned the pair Rose Bowl co-MVP honors. On the strength of their 34 to nothing first half explosion, Miami transformed the Rose Bowl into a no contest national championship. The game is over, the Hurricanes win the national championship. Miami beats Nebraska at the Rose Bowl, 37-14, their fifth national championship. On January 3rd, 2002, atop the hallowed turf of the Rose Bowl, the coronation of the team of the 21st century was complete. These Miami Hurricanes have been mentioned as possibly the best team ever in the history of this program that can boast five national championships and four other teams that enjoyed undefeated regular seasons. 
The 2001 Canes, under first-year offensive coordinator Rob Chudzinski, established themselves as the top-scoring team in school history, averaging 43.2 points per game. This scoring machine was led by junior Ken Dorsey, who ran his record as a starter to an incredible 26-1, best ever at Miami. The 2001 Maxwell Award recipient as the best all-around player in the nation, Dorsey finished third in the Heisman Trophy balloting. But with a full season still to play, Dorsey has already established himself as the most prolific touchdown tosser ever to play at quarterback U. Dorsey enjoyed the protection of what is widely considered as the finest offensive line in Hurricane history, anchored by a pair of All-American tackles. Four-year starter Joaquin Gonzalez earned recognition as the top scholar-athlete in college football by winning the Dratty Award. And Bryant McKinney's dominance at his position was confirmed by never giving up a sack in his career as a Kane, earning him the 2001 Outland Trophy as the nation's finest interior lineman. Running back Clinton Portis established himself in hurricane lore by recording 15 100-yard games throughout his career, most in school history, while becoming only the fifth UM back to surpass 2,000 yards. But the Canes' points not only came from their offense. For the second straight season, Miami was tops in the nation in non-offensive scoring, with a defense that scored eight touchdowns and special teams contributing four touchdowns and a safety. This hurricane defense led the nation in allowing less than 10 points per game, good for second best in school history. Like the offensive line, the defensive backfield established itself as the finest in college football, not only topping the rankings in pass efficiency defense, but also leading the sport with 27 interceptions. The undisputed leader of the secondary and the entire defense was consensus All-American Ed Reed who not only led the nation in interceptions with nine, but established two new career marks at UM with 21 picks, returned for 389 yards. Yet true to form of this spectacular playmaker, the interception for which he will be most remembered was one he didn't even make. After recording 45 takeaways during the season to lead the nation, the Canes added three more against Nebraska, and the three shutouts were the most in a single season by a Hurricane defense since 1956. The defensive dominance exhibited by Miami resulted in first-year defensive coordinator Randy Shannon being named recipient of the Broyles Award, given to the top assistant coach in college football. By defeating Nebraska in the Rose Bowl, Larry Coker became the first rookie head coach in more than 50 years to win a national championship. But the man at the helm of the Hurricanes is anything but a rookie. With 22 years as a Division I assistant coach, and after six years constructing the current Canes as offensive coordinator, Coach Coker was the perfect choice to guide the Miami program back to the top of the college football world once again. In doing so, he earned recognition not only as the Big East Coach of the Year, but as the Bear Bryant Award recipient as National Coach of the Year an honor sure to be shared by the entire Hurricane coaching staff. Larry Coker's Hurricanes were a textbook tempest waving a flawless force of destruction through the landscape of college football in 2001. Miami would find itself trailing a football game only twice, each time in the first quarter, and for a combined total of only 10 minutes. And the Kings average margin of victory of 33 points in their 12 contests smashed the UM standard set by many of these same players just one year earlier. Whether or not this was the finest team ever in Coral Gables, it was crystal clear that these Canes were the greatest team in the sport during 2001. The Miami Hurricanes are once again the undisputed Kings of collegiate football. Miami has won the national title, a perfect season for the Hurricanes, 12 at all. Their season of perfection was now complete. We talked about talent all along, but the, the, the thing that sets of this team apart we have great character. They refuse to give in, refuse to flinch. They've done what they've had to do week in and week out. They've gotten the job done. Just a tremendous group of young athletes and some tremendous coaches.